We're taking a closer look at another brick economy today. India, the nation's benchmark Sensex, has been one of the worst performing global markets this year, stock market index this year, and until recently. Well, in the past three weeks, it's gained 8%. And for more, we are joined by Jerry Webman. He's the chief economist of Oppenheimer Funds, which manages $182 billion. Jerry recently returned from India, where he attended the Institute of International Finance meeting in New Delhi. Welcome, Jerry. Thanks for Thank joining you. us Thank today. Glad to be here always. Um, you know what? Just right off the bat, what were your impressions of India? You'd been there on prior trips. Are things improving? We talk about it all the time in terms of great growth. Well, what's exciting is how much how much has changed, changed for the better, thinking particularly of infrastructure. And also, we are always impressed with how far India has to go. That has to go shows up as potential, but at the moment, it shows up as some, some pretty tough situations for an awful lot of people. Now, when you talk about a tough situation, you're talking about basic necessities, right? Like good roads, like good, um, good clean water, like health care, health care for, for most of the population. With that type of, those types of infrastructure issues, does this hold the country back in terms of growing the economy? Well, you know, if, if India already had 100 percent of, of all the infrastructure development it needs and all the, the consumer goods it needs, then, of course, it wouldn't be a country that was as rapidly on the rise as it is. So obviously, India's got a long way to go. But yeah, issues like literacy, infrastructure, uh, and just integration of many, many, uh, many millions of people into the economy, those are, are big obstacles to the rate at which India can grow. Jerry, what are some of the other obstacles right now that the country is facing? And what was, I know inflation certainly is something that we were talking about in terms of a number of BRIC economies, yeah, but what sure. else for India is a big concern? Well, the, the, you've hit on one of the major short-term ones, which really is inflation. Uh, and it's a particularly tough dilemma in India right now because unless India can maintain this 8-9% growth, of which they are justifiably proud, they're going to have a lot of trouble bringing, they call it economic inclusiveness, bringing the millions of people who are not part of the modern economy, who are still close to subsistence, bringing them into the modern economy. On the other hand, if growth continues at this kind of level, with rising food and energy prices, maybe not today, but, but a, a substantial jump, then inflation becomes an impediment to the country's growth. So it's a very tough situation situation right now that, that you, you pointed to, Lisa. What, um, what is a firm your firm looking at in terms of where the stock market falls out? The Sensex is down more than 6% year to date, but just in the last three weeks, we've actually seen quite a comeback, up about 8% in three weeks, making up for a lot of losses earlier in the year. Well, you know, Oppenheimer Funds has a very deeply ingrained philosophy on the equity side that we don't buy geographies and we don't buy indices. We're looking at individual companies. And in our developed markets fund, uh, over the last several years, we have found an awful lot of companies from the ground up in India that we thought uh, were good investments for our clients, and, and many of them have shown up in our, in our, on our investment funds. So we've had some very strongly positive views about some companies in India. We don't really have an opinion and we won't have an opinion. Philosophically, we try not to have an opinion about large, broad indices in stock markets, which are subject to so many factors, makes it tough to, d to actually deliver value to investors. Well, let's then uh, get a little bit uh, drilled down into what sectors you think stand to do well and which are really lagging. Well, l let me not talk about which, which are doing, with the, the potential in India has been, will probably continue to be in service delivery. Uh, India remain, is growing as a service economy. It's growing as a technologically driven service economy. A lot of that is because of the infrastructure problems that you and I talked about a few minutes ago. After all, it's one thing to transport electrons or microwaves. It's very much another thing to transport heavy trucks or steel. You need a different kind of infrastructure for heavy manufactured goods or large quantities of manufactured goods with uh, it's not therefore surprising that things like software services and outsourcing uh, logistics have been important in India because again those are things you don't need ro roads particularly to transport you can do it over the airways through Let, cables let's um, skip ahead talk about the BRIC summit you were there for a summit as well but China and India the two have been somewhat competitive you know India was the big growth story for a while but it seems as if China's really overtaken the country in terms of figuring out 
basic necessities, at least from the outside, that's the perspective. Well, yeah, India, uh, you know, China and India have often been compared to each other uh, for a lot of reasons. Uh, very different political systems, very different respect for how decentralized you'll, you'll, you'll allow markets to be. Uh, Chi and, uh, and China has been able to make advances, particularly in infrastructure. They're extremely impressive, what China's done with, 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 with rail, with water transportation, with power generation, with airports, compared to India. Uh, some of that is because in, uh, China has been much more aggressive and taking land for public uses and developing those public uses than, than India has, willing, has been willing to be as a, a, an expression of a very different political system, a more de much more democratic political system. That has its advantages and it has its disadvantages. Don't forget, though, that China is still a country with tremendous amounts of poverty, particularly in the central and western parts of the, of the country, uh, not necessarily the places where we travel when we go there on business as we see the, the large cities along the east and, uh, and then south coast. But China has its own serious problems with integrating uh, a, a, a poor population into its uh, mainstream economy. Jerry, I agree with you on that point. Unfortunately, we have to end there, but having been to Beijing and Mumbai both, I will say that the Chinese do a good job of making sure that their cities look perfect and you don't necessarily see what you see on the streets of Mumbai. Well, that's certainly true. That's All right. certainly true. Jerry, Lisa. thanks so much for joining us. Great to have you on the show. That was Jerry Webman, Chief Economist of Oppenheimer Funds.